Okay, welcome everyone to uh, today's Let's Talk Tech meeting. Today is uh, February 10th, 2022. And we please all feel free to add yourselves in the attendees list. We have a couple of topics in the agenda for today. The first one is uh, automatically bump the base image versions for new container images. Uh, Maya, Frido, it's all yours. Um, so maybe if you could uh, share the issue. Uh, please, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so the issue was about, uh, uh, so as it says, uh, automatically, automatically bump the, um, the uh, base image version we use to build container images. Uh, because um, now it requires a uh, manual bump, so which is kind of time consuming and it could be automated. So I opened this issue um, and proposed two solutions. So we talked about this uh, before uh, with some of you, but uh, I would like to have everyone's opinion. And also, Pep, you mentioned that uh, this could be a duplicate of another issue you opened before. And uh, so I saw Frido reopen the issue and uh, he uh, made the difference between uh, two kind of uh, bumps that we could uh, autom uh, make automatically. So it's about uh, bumping the base image version in AICOECI.yaml, uh, but also in uh, the overlays in that application. Uh, so maybe Frido, you want to detail a bit more uh, what you would like to, to do? Mm -hmm. Uh, so as you said, I think we uh, discussed once uh, chain rebuild, so uh, basically adjusting uh, the base image in ASUE CI. That was one use case, and the other use case was uh, we have the dot application repository uh, where there are manifest to deploy uh, applications. So uh, eventually, an enhancement. Uh, to save time, as, as Maya said, uh, could be automatically bump uh, versions in manifests once a COECI builds container images. Um, so uh, I don't know if that's like a big uh, thing to implement. I don't know uh, how big it is. Maybe Rasha will know. Uh, so most of the base images are coming from s 2 dot, and that is a repository which is not being maintained by the CI. Uh, it is being released man, so like it's maintained by either me or Fredo most of the time. So what we do is, or sometimes Christoph and others, but what happens in this is that when you release, you release it manually by, like, with, like it's not uh, with Kabishet or any bot, it's all manual. Uh, so you raise the tag and it gets released and QA builds it. That's what happens there. So technically there's no monitoring on that, but keeping that aside, suppose we are just thinking from a perspective that uh, from our bots, we can uh, check, oh, a user API is going to get built. Now let's see if there is a new update, new image for the display base image and we can open a pull request. That could be something which we can do. So that is something which is like a pre pre lookup that before doing the release, right? So it checks for a pre lookup and then really makes it a release. But I feel like this uh, should be in the realm of Uh Totally can be doable in ASUA CI, but why I think it should be in Kebishet is Kebishet is is looking at the repository and trying to maintain the repository. So it's the maintainer bot, right? So if if that also gives uh, users this this feature of updating their images, that is something which uh, would be great. But I understand this is in the AICVCI configuration file. Why should Kevishit touch it? So that is something which we can do from AICVCI, then update that uh, thing. Was the, the first use case I mentioned, but Pep, if you go to the two three one six, uh, uh, the re reference uh, pull request 
um, input application is the one. Uh, so uh, another use case could be automatically generate these pull requests by uh, CVCI, you know, so once user API is built, mm -hmm. uh, the AI CVCI eventually could uh, bump uh, the version in manifest files. Yes, so, but, yeah, Kim, if you want to say something. Isn't that just uh, like the release meeting and stuff? I feel like that should all be done manually like determining what's running in production and in stage in test but and all that. We, we yeah, do that for test, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, to just to iterate on what Kevin and Francesco said, we currently do that on test or we can do it in any of these things, but we primarily do it on test uh, mm -hmm. so that test can go there and the integration test. So in ideal world, what should happen is tests should get automatically updated, integration tests should pass. And then on the release meeting, we say, okay, yes, let's bump it up. And then we do that. Uh, yes, in the ideal world, we can see if integration tests pass and test, then a pull request can come in to update the stage. And if stage is also there, then we look up on the release date to update the production, right? That is something which I think should be the ideal flow. Uh, so, the missing parts here could be we need a pull request we need a feature which can update the stage environment state environment based on a pull request if integration tests pass and test because we are not sure if integration test will always pass and test because test is always changing right so yeah i can work on that and get something which can update the stage environment when there the, whenever there is a pull request for that uh, the, the thing was you know, to just open a pull request and uh, because these pull requests are manually created and uh, it is to see that the version bump on line 10. Yes. And and this could be eventually, you know, the build container image is ready and we know it's available, like ASU or ECI knows that it's available and pushed it to Quay. Yes. So I totally agree and I see your point, but what I feel here is as like it depends on also person to person, right? Like maybe yes. uh, for you, you are quite vigilant about these changes. And if the bot is opening, you're still looking at it. But for maybe for me, I'm not that vigilant. If a bot is opening, I'm completely trusting and I'm not looking at the work, right? So in this, what happens in this flow is if I'm maintaining or if I'm the in charge of the production environment and I don't, I'm not seeing what's happening there and bot is keep on opening, it's getting merged, then at some point of time, if Fido comes and asks me, oh, what version is running in user API? I might not have an answer and I would have to so say, oh, let me check all these things. So that's why I thought production should not be maintained by bots. And I agree with stage getting updated by bots, but this is something which I feel like this should only happen in certain cases. Like we had a, a major flaw in our current release and then we saw, oh, we fixed it. We have to push it to put or that then then only I should see this uh, 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 PR, right? Or else we don't open this PR. It should be the DevOps team taking the PR, which happens on the release date, which is uh, every Monday, right? Uh, every bi-weekly Monday. That's what I feel. Yeah, um, uh, like uh, for props, definitely, that should be like uh, one person uh, getting and yeah, that was a suggestion for first stage environment, you know, to uh, simplify it. I think that is where uh, Maya and I iterated somehow in, in private, right? Um, why can't we have like like a simple thing that is just getting triggers from upstream and then we're going to kick some stuff and a Tecton pipeline is executing a, a Python script, which is just in, incrementing the version number. And then it gets into, well, a lot of things, a lot of directions, because uh, it's not that easy. Um, okay, shall we separate that into like the the technical aspect, like uh, having that version bump pipeline, um, which is basically configurable. So um, we could say monitor user API in or. Uh, maintain user API in stage. 
That is basically the two configuration aspects or configuration uh, um, items. And then the pipeline will receive um, webhooks from user API on Quay and just open pull requests against stage environment, whatever is configured. Feels like like the technical part, like that version bump is always the same, no matter what environment, no matter, no matter what component, it's just an increment. Um, receiving the web trigger, yeah, easy peasy. So maybe you can create that component on a technical level and then see how it happens. Because it, it feels to me like, yeah, we, we, we can bump automatically from test to stage. Um, but that's a matter of merging pull requests. No, that is happening automatically, automatically, right? On, 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 on stage, on production, maybe we want to do pull request review, but at least the pull request that is bumping the version number could be opened automatically. I don't know yeah. if we get overwhelmed by, by a pull request to bump versions because maybe there's like two updates of a, of a patch release in one component in two weeks. I don't have a feeling for that, actually. Mm -hmm. No, no, this uh, completely makes sense. And uh, it actually fits into our one of our features, which we wanted to give out to other teams, which is yeah. like currently what's happening is uh, if you would have seen what Pep showed like two seconds, three seconds ago, like the deploy button, deploy part, uh, this thing, it, it doesn't open PR, but it directly pushes a commit. But now that could be a feature yeah, that we we have another block which says, oh, if you want a staging one, just add it here and then it will open a PR instead of a uh, commit, right? So in this way, people have flexibility of merging it or not. So. Um, correct. We'll do that. Uh, I think that's a great suggestion. So the, this was the topic. Yeah. and. And one thing here is, uh, I was thinking, so the thing is there are multiple environments and the behavior might want, we might want, and this is a, a change and a, or a potential enhancement, but there is test stage and prod. We might want to, to have different behaviors on each and, and have tests automatically, um, well, through configuration, but configure it to, you know, automatically bump the release in test then automatically create the PR to bundle release on stage, but don't merge it uh, and then don't do anything on prod, uh, wait for, or something like that. Uh, and that's exactly how I understand. Right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's a second topic, like the chain rebuilds on upstream release, blah, 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 blah thing, right? Yes, that one, exactly. Because I think that was uh, really, really, really initially the uh, conversation I had with Maya because Maya was looking at that whatever issue where, uh, where a lot of CVE existed in user API and we figured out, oh, damn it, um, AI, CVE, CI, YAML is outdated. We haven't caught up with the latest release. And, and these two uh, somehow go together like, uh, have we built the latest release based on an upstream release? And have we configured that latest release to be used by all the pipelines and stuff? Yeah, uh, it's totally doable by pipelines if you want to. Sorry, Francesco, we're adding something. No, no, you mentioned like we could do it uh, in Kebeshet. Even though, I mean, Kebeshet read the .yaml file and the base image in .yaml file override the AI YAML file. So if we have uh, all the base images in the .yaml file, then it can be a bot. Doesn't have to be a AI SUE pipeline. So the mm. bot just uh, read Quay and see there is a new one, um, bump. Yeah, uh, for, for me, uh, this is all Python scripts wrapped up in Tecton pipelines. If if they are invoked by Kebeshet or if they are invoked by some fancy, uh, what is it called, event listener on, of, Keb of Tecton itself, I don't care. Um, but you, you're right, it could be just Kebeshet triggering that 
because we know something or no, I, I, I don't care. I'm interested in that functionality itself. Python script doing the stuff, Tekton pipeline wrapping it up so it could be used by whoever. Sounds good. Uh, what I think here is uh, what about those projects which uh, don't list the base image in .yaml file? This could be something which which could be great because if you are looking at the .yaml file, then we can copy that and put that in .yaml file and that, this way we are maintaining it as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, Frido, the question um, does uh, Quay send triggers? Mm, I don't know why OpenShift product management is going away, but these triggers, which were pretty handy, we have had with the image streams in OpenShift, go completely away somehow. Um, Quay is sending out webhooks on push, I guess. So, whenever you push something to the um, to the repository, Quay is sending out a webhook. Um, for the, I think for the ACM or for Quay itself, there's some kind of operator which is actually monitoring all that stuff. So it's an additional component uh, and I think it's just made for ACM that is really starting monitoring releases upstream and executing something downstream, which is like, oh cool, you're really implementing open shift triggers fancy um so i think the the problem or the root cause is quay is not sending out any triggers in open shift universe but it's sending out web hooks we need to handle and again that was my thought let's wrap the functionality up in python let's wrap it up in a tecton script so that we can receive the web hook trigger exactly that stuff that maya just sent over the 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 webhook trigger received from Quay. And that could simply say, okay, user API uh, version 123 is the latest push, update uh, AICOE YAML. But, what? So if I push and the image is already created there, then I get a webhook. Mm -hmm. like I don't know, even the S2I minimal has been updated, but then you need the uh, source of the repos that use those. Exactly. Uh, so um, that is a question of deployability and uh, maintainability, I guess. So for every repository on Quay, we could uh, deploy uh, an event listener, Tekton event listener that is receiving the webhook and then executing a specific pipeline, or we could have a central event listener parsing stuff and scheduling pipelines. Um, I don't know which one is better, but obviously we need to configure the Quay repository to send out webhooks to a URL. The URL must be parsed or the payload must be parsed and Tecton pipeline configured and executed. Isn't it possible to have a, like a simpler version? I don't know if this would work. I'm just thinking aloud. But who is pushing to Quay in the first place? It's actually the pipeline, right? So no need to. I mean, we know when the push finishes and succeeds. So no. The pipeline knows when it is pushing, but the pipeline doesn't know what components are using this image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So there is no, uh, there is no maintaining like a database. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have knowledge on that. Uh, what I was thinking is, suppose uh, how what Kebisha does, it takes, uh, uh, it notes on, like if any project is active, like if there is having any push or any any ac action in it, it checks for updates, like Python updates, and it updates the like it sends out that have dot advisors, right? Uh, maybe we can do the same. If the if the repository is active, then we can we can open a pull request by saying, "Oh, it's been quite some time." By updating this base image, that could be something. Like we look for the base image if it is updated, and then send out this thing. 
Um, shall we go back to the many Git uh, ops based things that we have, namely the Ploigos um, project, and maybe look at the Manuela demo because they all take care about DevSecOps somehow. And I'm pretty sure they all have the same problem. Like there has been an upstream release. If, if I don't look for upstream releases of UBI images, I cannot talk about DevSecOps, I guess. So maybe they have some tecton logic uh, for all that stuff. Or at least we can verify how they do it. It's good, it's no good, it's too complicated. No, we can check it. The, the things which I've realized from these projects is they don't maintain the, they don't have images like as we have single images, they put directly this into a deployment config or jobs. So uh, I haven't seen them maintaining separately. So we technically don't see the builds happening in front of us. Mm -hmm. like, uh, but I may be missing, so I'll check again. And I see your point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that. Uh, makes sense. Um, I'll check. Um, um, uh, it feels like worth reading through these uh, projects. Yes. Um, so wh who's going to do that? Is it just you, Hashard? Or is, is Pep, uh, Maya, want to jump in too? Uh, do we put it in Kevin's chat so Kevin is involved? I mean, we should take a decision on saying, is it worth to put it in Kabishet or is it worth to put it in SVCI, right? Like, like, like. Oh, oh is it worth do... a, a separate component, right? If we want yes. to isolate that micro functionality into a component. Yeah. If this is something beneficial, which can happen in, um, which can help in other ways, then we should keep it as a separate component. But if it is just updating the ACCI YAML file, then we can keep it in the ACCI or Helm chart. Sounds like um, sounds like we can uh, educate um, the news team member on how to take architectural decisions in a proper way, uh, backed by some of the old guys. Um, maybe we just really write that up as an ADR and, and put it somewhere. I don't know if that is TOS core repository or somewhere in AICUECI and really let, let, let's listen to the recording again <laughs> and write down these uh, three uh, alternatives we have um, and really come to a conclusion. Spontaneous feeling, um, this cannot be a component that we are inventing here. That, that must be somewhere, somewhere, somewhere else, right? Um, so uh, what we need is really that, that tiny component that is receiving a message from upstream, a, a container image upstream, and reconfiguring something just to bump a version number or set it to the received payload. Is it a component of Kebishet? Yeah, might be. Um, is it AICUE? Pfft, yeah, no, I don't think so. It's AICUE is just consuming all that information. Is it fiddling around with TOS application? Yeah, might be. Um, so, so I'm unsure on that one. Maybe we need to um, rationalize on that a little bit. I think a separate component is the best way. But as you said, we'll discuss an ADR and put the information there. Yeah, and um, talking sprint planning and stuff like that, um, it might just be a nice opportunity for somebody not looking at uh, Maya or something, just to learn all that stuff, right? Um, it feels like um, it, is an, it, is an, uh, it is an effort. Um, it helps us in, in our daily work. Is it really core to our business? Uh, I don't know but it feels like a very good uh, component to learn some things. Not, again, not pushing Maya into something, but it feels like you might be interested. Yes, I, so I can, can do this uh, with help, of course. Yes. Sure. Cool. Uh... Okay, I'm not sure if I captured or, well, thanks for helping 
take notes, but feel free to expand if there are more notes to add here. In particular, I'm not sure exactly what to do with the issues themselves, so like updating them after the discussion, uh, the, the, the reference issues here. So Maya, if you can summarize them on the issues, that would yeah, hopefully, Sorry, maybe we can really just answer. point to the right? um, uh, or we can pull, pull that here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, feels like a yeah, reference yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should just saying that we should reference here this discussion from to, to, to in the issue to make you know keep it updated with the current status. Okay, anything else, or shall we move on to the next one? Uh, also, from Maya slash Rido, um, procedures to contribute to public repos. Um, so what uh, happens that uh, so some some uh, external person to Red Hat uh, open the uh, small pull request to fix a typo on uh, the manage uh, vulnerabilities with start tutorial, so which is on the Red Hat scholars organization, not on on the station. Uh, so this was just some, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so here it is, um, some typo in a git clone, I guess, uh, in the tutorial. So uh, with Frido, we saw this and we merged it as it's not, uh, like it doesn't seem to have any dangerous content or intellectual poverty thing. Uh, but we were wondering uh, if we had uh, some kind of uh, contributor, contributors license agreements or some kind of rules to for people for external people to contribute to our repositories. So is that something that already exists within Red Hat or within the organization? And should we, uh, if not, uh, in just write one? Uh, yes to all. Um, so um, I think we have a good practice um, how to. Um, how to uh, do that, how to accept community contribution. It heavily depends on the um, usage license um, of the project. Um, it heavily depends on the um, project itself. And for us TOS people, and I think all the operate first stuff, uh, we, we have contribution guidelines. Um, Hashad just pointed it out, uh, Toth uh, Station has a contribution uh, file that is in line with the good practice that GitHub is uh, proposing. And um, for example, the um, Kubernetes and OpenShift communities, they have um, code contributors agreements that you need to sign before they even take care about your pull requests. Um, so, so that is due to their their uh, to their project nature to their usage license mm. so i think for the toss station uh, we are good um for all of red hat we should be good because every repository that we create as red hat should have a contributors license a uh, contributors guideline and a license file if the red hat scholar does not have that stuff open an issue because that's wrong in that case Okay. Is it is it is it a good question? Are you looking for more? Uh, I was just wondering: uh, Do users, uh, do contributors that uh, want to to make uh, to open pull request actually see uh, this? I I mean, uh, are they going to go to the contribution uh, like file, or should it be like prompted? Uh, imagine like if they open a PR and uh, I don't know some. Some bots, for example, detects that they are external to to our organization. Maybe they could like open some comments automatically that would uh, tell them like you could read the contributors uh, agreement, for example. Um, so in the Kubernetes community, there is a GitHub um, check. Um, so um, there, there's basically an, an script that is running that is double checking if the contributor has signed the contributor license. There's a plugin for. Um, I don't know if we want to do that, I don't know if we need to do that um, because I don't see any reason why we should regulate 
who is able to contribute to our source code. From my point of view, it is GPL. Anybody is free to, to contribute that. That gets a little bit trickier if you are Google and if you want to restrict who or if you must restrict who is um, getting your, your software. Right, there's re export regulations on uh, the American um, uh, companies, and I think they are most often the root cause for having contributor license agreement uh, required by contributors. Yeah, um, whoever's sharing uh, PEP, exactly, there's uh, that uh, CLA uh, plugin of, um, of Prow that uh, could hand in, handle stuff like that. Um, it could be it could be a GitHub action which is doing all that stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure other CI CD uh, tools do that too. I um, there's also the C uh, the DCO um, plugin to the left uh, in the middle to the left that is also in that realm. Yes, send a pull request, Frido. I think I I would prefer the doc plugin over the CLA and the DCO plugin actually. Or the cat plugin. Or the and by the way, plugin. this this rock plugin doesn't work. We need to fix that. But anyway, when, when <laughs> coming about, uh, when coming, I don't know. Yeah, all that is good information. But I'm not sure if we ask answer the 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 original question on. So we do have contributor guidelines. That's kind of independent, though, from the existence of a CLA or not. Uh, and I, I believe, well, the implicit, if I understood your uh, answer, the, the implicit content is we don't want a CLA or we don't need a CLA. Uh, so I guess just to confirm, that's the answer to the original question of needing or, OK. Yes, I, I, I personally, as a community member, I don't need a CLA here um, because I don't want to manage restrictions on access to source code. Um, and I'm pretty sure we, as a Red Hat, we don't need that too. OK. Yeah, and the one from the Kubernetes community, actually, it's, it's come, it's, it, it is a requirement of the CNCF. Um, and as other projects in the CNCF share the same the same type of agreement. Yes, exactly. Okay. Anything else on that one? No, and also no other topics. Any final thoughts or comments? No? OK, well, uh, Christoph, I see you're moving your lips, but I don't hear you. I don't know if you're muted or. Yes, of course I'm muted. I don't know okay. where that strange behavior comes from that I start talking while muted. That is new in the past day, day somehow. Um, no other comments. Um, maybe we can stop the recording now if we are done. Yes, if I find the button. One second. <laughs>